Hello and welcome! I'm Adam with Pushy on Vote, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. This video is part two of our exploration into Unity. Last video we were able to do a simple moving the agent to a goal. Now we're going to try to introduce a button and uh, maybe a little wall in the way and see if the agent can learn how to hit the button first before moving on to the goal. So without further ado, let's jump on over to our Unity environment. I'm going to be using the same one we used in the last video. So if you haven't seen that previous video, definitely go check that out. I'll link it right now. Um, and let's go get started. All right, so swapping over, if you remember in the last video, this is where we ended, where we just had this agent moving to a simple goal. And uh, we were able to train that. So let me pause this. What, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a button and this button is going to control a wall. Um, and in order to get to the goal object, the agent must learn to hit the button first to lower the wall uh, in order to get to the second area. So uh, let's go ahead and make that. I'm going to delete all of the environments um, and I'm going to go into assets and click on environment and this is the one that we are going to edit. Um, as I said before, if you edit the ones that are not the actual asset environment, it'll only do one at a time instead of all of them. Okay. So I'm going to kind of just spread these out a little bit and I'm going to change this platform to be, um, the positioning is fine, but I want to change the scale a little bit. So let's make the X uh, six and the Z is five, that's fine. Um, and we're kind of just going to adjust this a little. So let's make the X position negative one. And let's make the position of the goal at five. Yeah, five will work. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I need to make another platform here. So I'm going to create a, another object, another cube. I'm going to slide this over. The Y is going to be negative 0.5. The um, Z position is going to be zero and the X position is looking like it's going to be 3.5 maybe. Uh, it's actually going to be more than that, but for now we'll go with that. Um, the, let's see, the Z position needs to, or it's scale needs to be five. And then we'll just make the X position four. Um, we'll see how far that gets us. That might need to be less than that. Let's make it three. Okay, so what we want is a gap of one in between here because we want our wall to be one. And so it looks like our X may be 4.5 in order to make that work. That's gonna put our ball at 4.5 as well. Now clicking on this platform, we need to basically make it exactly like the other platform. So I need to add the platform material onto it. Just drag and drop that one in. And that should be it for the platform. Just make sure everything is the same. Which it should be, okay. So um, going in, I'm gonna make another 3D object. And this one is gonna be the wall in between the two platforms. So uh, I'm going to make the Z position zero, the Y position, I'll just make one for the time being. And the X position, will be two, uh, let me see where I am in the middle here. Looks like 2.5. Yep, we'll get us right in the center. Okay, the scale, the Z is obviously gonna be five to keep that the same, and we will make the X, uh, sorry, the X is gonna say one, the Y is going to be, let's go with two. If I rotate this down, I wanna figure out what the bottom is there. So that would put the Y at zero. So this is what it's gonna look like. It's just gonna be a small wall in between the two platforms and we're gonna put a button in between the wall and the agent that must be pressed in order to get to the other side. I'm going to change the name of these. So this one just needs to be, I'm just gonna make it platform two. And then this other cube obviously is the wall. I'm not gonna worry about changing the color because white is fine by me. Um, I am going to move some things around here. So I do need to add rigid body for the wall. 
if I open that up, I don't want to use gravity because I don't want it falling through the ground. Um, but I am going to freeze the position so that it doesn't move around uh, whenever the agent runs into it. And that will be it for the wall. Um, there, Actually, there is one more thing I do need to do. And under scripts, I'm going to create a new C-sharp script. I'm going to call this wall. Same thing with the uh, reason we did the other ones, but within wall, I'm just going to drop that in there so I can identify uh, which one's the wall. And it did not go, so I'll do that again. Okay, cool. All right, so that should take care of that. Um, next thing I do need to create is the button. So I'm going to create another object. It's going to be a cube. I'm going to move the cube over. All right, um, under transform, the position, we are going to make the X zero. The Y uh, is going to be 0 0.1. And the Z is going to be zero. The scale, the X is going to be one. The Y is going to be 0.2. And the Z is going to be one. So it's just, if you look at it, it's just barely above. I'm actually going to make it even smaller than that. So I'm going to make the position 0 0.05 and the scale 0.1. And that will put the button, yep, slightly smaller and perfect. I will change the color of this one. So under materials, I'm going to create a new material. I actually already have one here. So let me just go ahead and drop that one in. Um, but I just made this one pink, uh, pink purple. And that will be everything we need to do for this. Okay, so uh, we now have our environment. We do need to go back and update our script. So now we need to actually get some of the logic done, right? So if I open up move agent, it's off screen. So let me push this over. All right, now I have to add in these things. Um, I'm sorry, there is one more thing as well. The button does need an identifier. So we do need to create a C sharp script that says button. Click on the button and just drag that in. That's uh, loading. Okay, click on the button, drag that in as a new component. The box collider for the button does need to be a trigger. And I do need to make it a rigid body. Um, I'm not going to follow gravity though. And that should be fine. Uh, yes, that should be everything. Okay, so now I'll go to the script. And I have a problem with the script. Open there it goes okay, and we are going to go ahead and add some things in. So we have the goal transform. We're going to copy that. Now I need to give it the button transform, and I need to give it the wall transform as well. So these are all the positions for the goal button and wall. Under initialize, uh, we have the transform and the goal. Now we may have moved some things around, so we need to go figure out if they are in the right spots. Uh, the transform is negative 2.5.50. I believe that's what it already is. Negative 2.5.5 and zero. The goal is at 4.5.5 and zero. So the goal is at 4.5.50. Now I need to add a couple more things. So taking the goal, we need to also do the button. So looking back, the button is at 0, 0 0.05 and 0. So if I go here, 0, 0 0.05 and 0. And the last thing I need to do is the wall. So copying that, this one is going to be the wall transform. And the new vector is going to be 2.500. Okay, perfect. Copying that, I'm down to the on episode begin. 
Heuristics can say the same. It's only moving in the X and Z axis. On action received uh, is going to say the same as well. We are collecting more than two observations here, so I'm going to copy this. We do need to add in the button. So instead of the goal transform for this one, it's going to be the button. Now when I do this, if you remember, I have to go back to the agent and I have to click down here on space size because I'm passing in three vectors. Now that's going to be nine uh, components. Uh, going back to the script, I do need to add one more uh, if statement here. So copy one of those if statements. Now I'm going to be looking for if the thing is a button. Uh, then we're going to uh, do the reward. So um, instead of set reward, I'm going to add reward since we're going to be um, adding multiple rewards together. So down here, I'm also going to do add reward 0.5. And then down here at the bottom, add reward negative 1. So I am not going to end the episode after it hits the button because I don't want it to. I want it to hit the button and then go to the goal. So I'm just going to remove everything here. Um, I did change to add the reward for the negative reward, but I'm actually going to put that back to set reward because I just want it to be negative. I don't want it to be negative 0.5 um, if it happened to hit the button first. So that's what I'm going to keep that at. And... That should be good. Now, I talked in the last video about um, how the computer may be able to take advantage of some rewards that you improperly set. If I were to run this right now, um, it would stay on top of the button because every time it stays on top of the button, it gets 0.5. So we need to adjust that by um, letting it know when the gate was opened. So if I run up to the top... <clears throat> I can um, make an integer called gate open, and I'm just going to initialize it to zero. And then within here, I'm also going to do gate opens equal to zero. So it's just going to reset on every, uh, every time the game is initialized and down here on every time the, a new episode begins. <clears throat> When I'm looking at this this trigger here, when the button is pressed for the first time, I do want it to give it that reward. Uh, but when it's pressed another time after that, I do not. So in this if statement, I'm going to say if gate open is um, it does not equal one, right? So if the gate hasn't been opened already and the thing that was hit was the button, then we're going to give it the reward, and then I'm going to change gate open to be equal to 1. So if the gate was not open, we're going to get the reward. We're going to say the gate is open and is no longer be going to be able to get this reward. Um, and that's going to stop it from sitting on top of that button. I think that will do it for everything we have here. Let me save this. And... Go back to see if that will load in. Okay, I'm gonna click on the agent. I want to remove the neural network model uh, because I'm not going to obviously be using the same one because it's a different problem now. And I'm gonna change the behavior back to default. Now if I go back, I can go to assets, move that environment in. Um, looking at my main camera, that'll be fine. I'm just going to play it and use heuristics to see if this works. Okay, the variable button transform has not been assigned. Okay, so going back, we have the button transform right there. And the button transform. Now, we figure out where this error is coming from. 
Okay, I do know where it is. So if I click on, uh, sorry, let me go back to assets and the environment and I click on the agent. One thing we didn't do is fill in all those missing values. So let me move some of this stuff up. So now we have button transform and wall transform that are not that do not have anything in them. Um, I'm going to have to rename this to button. But if I click on the agent, I can move the button over to button transform and I can move the wall over to wall transform. Thinking about it now, one thing I did not do was add logic to move the wall down. So whenever the button is hit, um, I'm going to take this wall transform that I wrote in the initialization, and I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to lower the wall. So I'm going to say it's going to be a new vector, and I need to get the position of when it's all the way down, which I believe is negative 1. Yep, looks like it's negative 1. I'm going to put that back and I'm running back to the script. Um, this is going to be, I forgot to get the X value. So the X value is going to be 2.5, negative one zero. Okay. So 2.5, negative one and zero. So that will lower the wall. Let's go back and see if I have any errors. Okay, oh, I'm in play mode right now. Uh, let me go ahead and play it and see if it will let me run it. Okay, I can move around, heuristics still work, the wall does lower, and I can go and grab the object. Now let me just make sure, ah, I'm trying to not touch the wall, or not touch the button, and I cannot get through the wall, so. Yep, I have to hit the button to get over there. So that's essentially how this is gonna work is it's gonna have to learn to hit the button. Right now it's a straight line. We're gonna start with that, but um, eventually we will get to randomization of where the agent spawns, where the goal spawns, and where the button spawns. So let me jump over to our command prompt. I am already in the virtual environment. If you're not, go ahead and redo that. Um, so navigate to your folder, do a, uh, venv slash scripts slash activate to activate the virtual environment and then you can run the command ml agents dash learn config with that yaml file we created the run identity is going to be equal to test three in this case that's the one i'm up to if you want to name it something else that's fine just make sure it's not one you're already doing and go ahead and run that Okay, it's waiting for this to start. We will go ahead and start it. And you can see it's doing random things and we may need to, if I stop this for a second and I go to the environment, I click on the agent. We may need to increase this max steps just because it has to travel farther. So let's just say 4,000. I'm going to save that, go back. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create more of these environments. So I'm going to copy, move them over. And one other thing that I totally forgot to do as well, in the assets under the environments, I am going to look at the boundary because I believe our boundary has moved. And it has. So we're going to have to rescale this boundary. The X... Scale needs to go slightly bigger. Uh, let's do 17 and I need to shift it a little bit. So I'm gonna go one for the X axis and that looks fairly decent. And I am going to go back to hiding this. So um, hiding the boundary. <clears throat> okay, so we have our two environments here. Uh, I'm going to slide it over more just to make sure it doesn't collide with each other. Uh, I'll just do 
I'll just do nine of these and then I need to make sure my camera's correct and it's not. So we need to back it up a little bit. And we need to drop it down. Okay, that should be fine. This is what our view is gonna look like. And let me go ahead and go back to this. I just tried to run test three. We didn't really do anything, so I'm gonna delete that. And now I'm just gonna run that same line again. So the ML agents, config file, the run ID, and start. Okay, so it's listening and we are ready to start. All right, so again, trying to figure out what to do. Okay, it learned to hit the button on a couple of these. And I'm gonna pause the video here. I uh, I will come back, I'll let this train for a while, come back and see if we were able to learn how to hit the button and then hit the goal object. Um, if not, we can come back and adjust our training environment and see what else we can do a little better. So uh, stay tuned and I will be right back. Okay, so coming back, uh, you can see the agent did learn that it needs to hit the button. Now, some of these, it is getting stuck on the wall. Um, and so we can do some things to fix that. For instance, we can pass it uh, whether or not the wall has been lowered or not. So just pass it a bit, zero or one, if it's been lowered. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm also going to, at the same time, this was a fairly easy problem, right? Just run in a straight line to the right. So let's start adding some randomness to this and um, try to spawn the agent, the button, and the goal in different areas. So if I open up the script, the first thing I'll do is add that observation of whether or not the gate has been opened. So to do that, uh, let me, under sensor, add observation, we, instead of button transform local position, we're just gonna pass it gate open. And if you remember, gate open was that integer that we created. Initialize to zero when the gate is open it goes to a one. So um, that will be something that we can add to it And now let's look at where the where all these things are spawning. So We need to add some randomness to this, but we need to spawn them within random ranges, right? So if I go over here And I go into the environment I'm gonna take this agent right here and I'm gonna figure out where I want him to spawn. So I'm gonna want him to spawn if I move him over from negative three to negative 1.5 in the X direction. If I go up here to transform instead of this, I'm gonna do a random dot range from negative three to negative 1.5. Now I'm gonna do the same thing in the Z direction. So if I can change my camera a little bit. Z is gonna be negative, let's go with 1.5 to positive 1.5. Same thing, random dot range, negative 1.5 to 1.5. And make sure my brackets are closed. Okay, so that takes care of the agent. Let's go look at the button now. Uh, the button I want, Okay, the button, let's go stay at zero, but go all the way up to one. So from zero to one on the X direction. That's this one right here. 
zero F to one F. And then the random dot range for the Z is going to be the same thing as the other one since it doesn't change width. So negative 1.5 to 1.5. And the last one is the goal. So I'm going to copy the Z part because again, that's not going to change, but what will change is the X. So going back to Unity, just making sure I'm not hitting the wall. All right, let's say four. Let's just go between four and five. And I will go to the goal, which is right here. We're gonna use random range, and this is gonna be from four to five. Okay, I'm gonna save that. I'm going to copy all of this, and I'm going to push this down to the on episode begin save that now one thing that did change was after this loads the agent now has more inputs coming in so i need to go to behavior parameters it no longer has nine it has 10 because i passed it that one other bit so it, it is getting 10 inputs now so change that to a 10 and we should be good to go after that now, this is getting more and more complex, um, and so the agent may struggle to learn this. If it does take a while to learn, what you can do is you can just drop the wall to be down right from the beginning and have it learn um, to hit the button or the object, and hopefully it will learn that it will get the most points if it hits the button and the object, but it has the option to go to both. So that is one way to kind of get around it and allow randomness to make it all the way to the right-hand side. But for now, um, we will work with this. So I'm going to save this. And I am just going to play with heuristics first just to make sure everything is spawning in the correct area. Okay, as you can see, everything is randomly scattered around. Um, I'm just going to move some of these, have it reset. Yep, so everything is spawning in different locations. I'm looking at the bottom left one, but yep. Okay, so it seems to be working. Now we can rerun a new experiment. Uh, not the one I was looking for. I'm looking for this one. So we're going to, again, mlagents-learn, the config file. We're going to run. I'm going to call this one test4. If you go ahead and run that, it's listening, and I will begin the simulation. Okay, so going around doing random things, I'm going to pause the video here and come back to see if the agent learned to make it to the goal, which it already had for one of them. So um, off to a good start, but I'll be right back. All right, so looking back at our progress and the agent is definitely learning how to hit the button. Now it is still getting stuck uh, in some areas, so it definitely has some more improvement to do as it keeps learning. But uh, for now, I'm going to stop it here and I'm actually going to stop the video here. So uh, we were able to train the agent to hit the button and open the gate and get to the goal. Um, definitely a next step in, compared to the first video. But um, what we'll do next time is we're going to keep expanding upon this. So now instead of just having one area the goal can spawn, um, we're going to make a almost a plus shape to see, okay, hey, it can spawn at any one of these. And then also we'll add in some more dynamic stuff, like uh, the goal now is able to uh, roll around the platform. And so not only does it have to hit the button, but it also has to intercept the moving goal. So... Uh, stuff along the lines of that definitely stay tuned again if you got anything out of this please like and subscribe to the channel and uh, until next time take care and see you in the next video